The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum. You are listening to Sisters Speak and we are live on Inspire FM. Um, you are listening to me, Amina. And me, Sonia. Uh, yeah, so welcome back, guys. Um, today, we uh, our main topic will be about starting a hobby, and that sounds a bit lighthearted, but, you know, usually on Sister Speak, we like to get talk about things that people maybe don't want to talk about, so we're going to be talking about hobbies and what might ruin a hobby, does it actually ruin a hobby, but we'll get into that later. Um, for Oh, wait. Sonia, I mean, Samiha, sorry, <laughs> I'm so out of it today. Do you want to tell us what our show is about before we get into everything um, else? So our show is a platform uh, for Muslim girls to voice their opinions on current events and issues and form discussions on general topics such as religion, culture, politics. Um, all our opinions and views are our, are our own and they, we don't claim to represent anyone and um, we respect all other opposing opinions and views and we welcome, yeah, them. Yeah, perfectly summed up. Um, yeah, so that's what our show is about. And we also have a segment on our show called Thought of the Week where we share something with each other and with whoever's listening, so maybe something important to us, something that's happened to us during the week, who knows. But um, yeah, our thoughts of the week. Uh, Sonia, do you want to go first? Sure, <laughs> just land me straight into it. <laughs> um, yeah, my thought of the week is aim to do something kind every single day. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so if you just wake up that day and think, I'm going to do one kind thing. And, you know, if you achieve it, you do. If you don't, you don't. But the aim to be there, that's the best thing. So you just aim to be positive all day, aim to be kind. That's, that, that's a good one. You two should do it too, guys. Yes, yeah. Okay. No, thank you for that. Thank I think yeah. it. I think it's good to tell yourself to do it rather than just be like. Mm. I think it's a reminder of how whether you're doing the right thing or not. Yeah. I like. And, that. and one is the minimum. Like aim to do one kind thing, but do as many as you can. Yeah. That's the aim. But yeah, aim to do one kind thing a day. Oh, that's cute. Thank <laughs> you for that, Sonia. That's all right. Uh, Samiha, what about you? Okay, so I forgot we even had this segment, <laughs> wow, to be honest. Wow, wow. I know, so prepared. But I might just share an experience. So um, I'm home alone, um, and yesterday it was like my... Uh, it's, I've never stayed on my own with, with my baby, and I enjoyed the solitude. It was nice. And I feel like we're, so, we're surrounded by everybody all the time. And I know last week I said that if you're at home, enjoy it. But this week I'm saying that take time for yourself as well. And do things that you know you probably wouldn't do if you were, I don't know, with, living with your family or you know if you're married and you know you and your husband like have I don't know routine at night whatever. Just do something that's for you. So I read yesterday. It was you read a book. Time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell um, us more. Tell us more. <laughs> it was really lovely, and you know my baby was sleeping, and it was just me and you know. Aww. Yeah, it was good. It's nice to have some me time. Yeah, it's good. And on to me, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say my thought of the week, uh, I've been thinking a lot about how we should really appreciate our youth and our health that we have right now because, I don't know, I, I guess I never really appreciated it as much before, but I, if seeing, like, my grandparents it makes it really makes me think how we should appreciate our own health um but yeah as i was saying um yeah like i was just thinking recently how we sh we shouldn't take our youth for granted because we have yeah. so much that we can do at our age right now. Can you give us an example of what you mean though? I don't know, like just simple things like being able to walk without being in pain. Okay. Just simple yeah. things I like that. I know what you mean. Or even like having the, f like f having the freedom to go out and mm -hmm. just do whatever, like do whatever you like. Like 
maybe like maybe when you start a family you'll have a few more restrictions because you have I agree more responsibilities do you know what I mean I think we should really appreciate what that kind of ties in with Samina's one as well in a way yeah yeah Yeah, because I was just thinking about that recently and I was like I mean I think I alhamdulillah I'm in a good place now like physically I'm fine and you know I'm like I'm living at home with my family which is a which is a big privilege and I think that that gives me a lot of I guess a lot of freedom in some ways because I don't have much responsibility and I also have freedom in my own body with what what I what I can and can't like I mean what with what I can do like I can I'm healthy enough to you know go for a run I mean not that I go for a run <laughs> no I knew maybe what you I mean. should but like that's what I mean like if we look after our bodies now then we'll be able to enjoy ourselves more when we're older okay yeah yeah yeah. absolutely yeah i I see where you're coming from so like take care of yourself appreciate your body do the things you want to and establish goals and yeah sounds really i think that really ties in with samiha's one as well yeah do something i agree because when you have family although it's really beautiful experience it does become where you have to put yourself put other other people's needs before yours and so when you do put yourself first, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Good advice from a mum there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's always good to know. Um, yeah, so I guess that brings us to the end of our thoughts of the week, right? Um, and we also, if you guys want to share your thoughts of the week, if you have anything inspirational to share, um, you can always text or WhatsApp us in on 0779481822. Um, we also have a Facebook Live, so, you know, go on to Inspire FM's Facebook. You can see us there, you can comment down below, and, yeah, join in with our conversations. We love to hear from you guys. Um, next, we have our Hot Topics, and um, this week we are talking about the coronavirus. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it, and one thing I wanted to say was that I think a lot of people seem really scared about it and I'm not going to lie, I felt kind of scared about it too. I guess because there are some things out there which are a bit misleading mm-hmm. or... Um, but yeah, I guess there's some... There's post- a lot of myths out there. Let's yeah, call it a myth. Um, there's a lot yeah. of myths. <laughs> and I think it was... I thought it was important to take it upon myself to make to clear those things up for anyone else who may have felt the same way because... Um, I know that there have been people like around the country and around the world as well who have been, um, what's the word? I guess they've been mistreated Misled. because oh, yeah. because of Victimized? how they look. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. because just yeah. simply because of how they look, and I think that's also wrong. So um, yeah, I think I'll pass it on to Samiha. She had some. Um. So. I think that the the most common um, misconception is that if you get coronavirus, um, if you get the coronavirus, that you will die. And I think a lot of like videos are circulating where people are just dropping like flies. But um, only 2% of the cases have been reported to um, lead to death. Mm-hmm. And most of these deaths were associated with weaker immune, sy- immune systems. So those that are of elderly age are more likely to suffer um, the uh, mortal effects okay. of the virus. Yeah. Um, as opposed to if you are young and healthy, it will still impact you, but it won't be so devastating and tragic, you know? Yes, you might not necessarily die. Die, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also, I think one of the most important things that really needs to be addressed, the fact that... Um, it, it, it originated in China, and as a result of that, a lot of um, people are spreading um, spreading misconceptions that you know we should blame China or be wary of people from China, which isn't true because it's fueled by mainly racism and um, xenophobia as opposed to rational thought. Um, it is now spread across so many countries, and um, yeah, I yeah, guess yeah, that yeah. that's something I felt like it really. It was so sad because you are condemning an entire, um, you know, like generation yeah. of people and identity 
to a particular disease. Absolutely. Do you know it's what I mean? I just feel like carried away and letting the myths like cloud their thoughts and judgment. Mm. And it's never okay to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure people have seen cases now, if you're on social media, on the news, of people acting in a certain way in public transport because um, if they feel like they're, gonna, they're at threat of catching the coronavirus, and that is not an okay way to act. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the common flu kills more people. More people. <laughs> like this, gen- this is a known fact. The common flu-, flu kills more people than the coronavirus has. And that's something that you can catch in public transport anyway. anyway. So if you're going to be wary, be wary all the time. Don't start now. <laughs> I mean, you can start now, but don't try and attack it and target that's it at a certain person. Yeah. yeah. No, you can, you know, if you want to be wary, sneeze into your elbows. That's what Samia <laughs> says, right? Sneeze into I your elbows. That's, that's use the general hand. advice. That's, given. Gen- yeah. that's general advice. Exactly. Yeah. When it's cold days, you know, germs are spreading, everyone's got the cold, everyone's got the flu. That's something you should be wary of anyway. Don't try and make it one specific thing. Don't target something. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see it in social media a lot. People just being rude, downright rude and ignorant. And that's not okay. Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, with not just the coronavirus epidemic, but with anything that's happening all over the world, which is huge or which is causing a lot of panic and disorder, there's always going to be fake news. Mm -hmm. And this particular instance, there has been so many fake news where videos of individuals who are, you know, who are supposedly have contracted it, presenting symptoms, it turns out that that video, ha- you know, occurred like six, seven years ago. Okay, see, that's how and easy there false are, information yeah. can spread. Yeah. And, um, like, um, yeah, I mean, just because we live in the UK doesn't mean we're not, we're safe from fake news. Mm. Uh, we're just as likely to get fake news. And I think WhatsApp is somewhere where it just yeah spreads exactly you, you get it you pass it on and now that information's been exactly passed on. yeah, yeah. and i had a message that said if you have a certain app made by a certain company get rid of it because it could be infecting you through your phone <laughs> and i was horrified <laughs> i was like gosh no <laughs> and you know i just yeah i laughed and then just so it's just important to fact check yeah I'd say. fact check and Whatever i think that yeah yeah, important. I think just be careful of what you read on social media because, you know, the, I think uh, I saw quite a few posts which were made to scare the people who saw it and it kind of worked because yeah. it worked a little bit on me. <laughs> oh, but then, like, you. I realised that it's not... Is it a credible source? Is it, like, is it truthful? I think we need to just also just be a bit realistic like you said we the advice given by the government if you go on the gov uk website is to you know just do the normal things that you do when a flu is around you sneeze in your elbows um you know wash your hands frequently these are just things that you should be doing Mm -hmm. anyway um if you are scared i mean read the nhs website read the gov uk website they have information for you and it's i think it is in my opinion, it's being blown out of proportion. And maybe because it's, um, I think maybe because it's a new thing, something we haven't really yeah, heard like of. Exactly. Thing, yeah. And um, we just have to educate ourselves, yeah. really. It's just, yeah. there's nothing to be afraid of. Obviously, you have to take general precautions. Always wash your hands, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Sneeze into your elbows, carry a pack of tissues. General stuff, <laughs> general hygiene. Yeah, that's just how to get stay some yeah, away. Oh, and I've just seen this fact on the WHO website, so that's the World Health Organization, mm-hmm. and I've just educated myself because it says, is it safe to receive a letter or package from China? Um, the answer is yes, it is safe because coronavirus from previous analysis does not survive long on objects such as letters and packages yeah it's just you can still order whatever you need to order that that is an interesting fact because i was thinking like there's quite a few online websites that ship from china uh, yeah so absolutely i've had this conversation before and i was wondering it so you probably answered a lot of people's questions as well it's on the who website world health organization (laughs) it's reassuring You can yeah. order from China, it's fine. Don't worry, and guys. also, you can order your two pound phone case from China. Don't <laughs> oh, worry. So cute. <laughs> and uh, v- like visiting China and booking into their hotels is also fine. There's been 45% less um, hotel bookings ever since the virus. So um, there are people who are reliant on the tourism industry. So, you know. It, yeah. yeah if you're planning to go exactly just yeah. don't it said don't cancel keep just go and yeah i mean it's devastating for the people that are affected by it and 
like you just can't take away from that fact but mm-hmm. you can you know be careful and take I think at first it's it you see where everyone's coming from because you don't know what it is um yeah, even news outlets and as you mentioned planes you know they yep. were stopping flights yep, yep. I get it at first you don't know what it is but now there's research being done and if you seek the research you will find the research as yeah. you mentioned, even NHS website you know the Gov UK website so if you look at it you're happy that's a fact move on like learn from it <laughs> instead of just keeping that same information that moral panic going on in inside your head, you it's time to drop yeah. it and learn yeah yeah i think the my general advice would just be to obviously stay safe as you usually would and just be smart about it like don't let me just be smart yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> be smart that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try um, our best yeah <laughs> please guys yeah <laughs> um uh yeah i guess that brings us to the end of our hot topic and um on to our main topic which was a suggestion from Sonia which I yeah. really liked which was starting a new hobby um, <laughs> you, do make, you, you gave them yeah I'll, okay I'll start the hobby part <laughs> but then you obviously went on to make how the, you can yeah. take the fun out of a hobby yeah sure no but yeah. I wanted to start about like what it, first of all why did you choose this topic because I yeah. thought it was cute oh cute <laughs> um, <laughs> okay so I'll be honest with you obviously I currently am working um, and on the site, when you're just working, it's not the job that I want to be in in the future. <laughs> How old am I? But yeah, so um, so it's like on the side, I like to do things that I actually enjoy, my passion, my hobby. That's what mm. I mean. Um, so an example is even being on the radio right now. So obviously I yeah. like, like the radio, I like to do it here and there. And nothing's taken the fun out of this for me yet. <laughs> um, but the reason why I said it is because I think it is so, so, so important to keep doing what you like. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be a career because mm-hmm. we're so used to, okay, I really like this. Oh, I need to go find a job in that. Not necessarily. And you won't necessarily find a job right away as well. So after I graduated in anthropology and media, I didn't find a job in media right away. Mm. I didn't do an application, I'm not going to lie to you, because they were very long. <laughs> but the whole point is, like, it wasn't... I'm not rushing to do it because I can still do it on the side. So on the side, I'm looking into creating a short film. That's something I'm doing voluntarily. There's no money involved, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not something I'm getting paid for. It's not work. It's just fun. That's what that's what I think people should do. I'm encouraging it, guys. Everyone, find something you like. I know we all say knitting, you know, something easy. (laughs) Something cheap. Even if it's like learning a language, you know, you can download apps. You can do it for free. Start doing that. That's what I would say. That was so rallying, right? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what do you think? So, you know, is it doable? I'm just being realistic here in terms of time. If you go to school at the same time, can you really do that on the side? You know, people like, if they do sports, you can do sports in the weekend. Like, mm. like is where's the balance? I mean, when do you take it into a career? Because if we could, of course, do what you want to do as a career. If you want to be a painter, an artist, it'd be amazing if you can get paid for that. But it's not easy, is mm. it? It's not the first thing, yeah. especially in the creative industry. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, I think I wanted to ask you guys because of that, like, what is the actual point of a hobby? I mean, is it? The cause point of the, a I, hobby. I mean, we have careers, right? And then then that's what a hobby is for. So what exactly is a hobby? Well, Why do we have them? It, you see, okay, I hate to say it, but sometimes a career can just be, I need to put food on the table. That, yeah, sometimes it is that, true. right? Um, if you can uh-huh. turn your hobby into a career, that would be amazing. So for example, if you love cooking and you open up a cafe and it's earning money and it's doing well, that's the dream. But is that realistic? How how easy is that? Mm. I think a hobby is what keeps you sane. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you know you can always go back to it. Like, if you play sports on a evening, on a weekday, um, you know... You kind of look forward to it, right? Not that I do. Yeah. Wish I did, but I don't. And um, I don't know if you paint or draw. It's it's really relaxing. I think it mm-hmm. kind of takes your mind off the whole. Um, yeah, like grind for the week, and you know, yeah. some people work weekends as well, and for them, I guess it's like an escape. So yeah, I think that's why hobbies are important. Yeah. Like to to like wind down after you your job or whatever you're doing during the day yeah. like you said it's some people have to have a job to put food on the table which i think a lot of people do right yeah. and i think that's why hobbies are so important but if you can have a hobby that is your job job yeah, yeah. that's amazing is it still a hobby because then you there's no winding down if i'm I cooking 24 so. 7 and i love cooking 
then is it a job? Is it a hobby? Do I still need to pick up another hobby on the side? <laughs> like, what, where does that, where do we go from there? But then they say if you turn your hobby into, like, your livelihood, you never have to work another I love, day. I do love that quote. Right? I, I, I feel like it really <laughs> makes so much sense. Because if you sense. wake up in the morning like, yes, I'm going to do what I love today. Then you're not working. Isn't it? Yeah. Although you are earning money. Exactly, but then... <laughs> which would be great. But you could always say that, you know, your hobby... Um, is your source of income. But yeah. do our hobbies always stay the same? No. Like that's that's the thing. Like you mentioned, Sonia, that if your hobby is turned into your career, does that take away from it being a hobby? I mean, are you always gonna have the same interest that helps you wind down? Like that's I guess that's what I think is a hobby. But um like does it always have to be the same thing? Is it can mm. like does it mm. like say you like painting for example yeah. am i always gonna love that like is it like imagine that becomes your job like doesn't that Do doesn't you think mean that takes the that fun doesn't out keep of it? you from having another one yeah. i feel that like hobbies sense. no it does i feel like hobbies are influenced <coughs> so much by time and place and your means and things like that yeah. um That's see true. i could love skiing but how would i know exactly because i don't exactly <laughs> go skiing true, all the time. right yeah. and um i think if you're in a certain place you discover a hobby mm, you know yeah. like i love going to the beach wow and i would do it if i could every day oh. <laughs> so um when i was in uni my camp my um boarding was it was coastal so it was seafront and I would go every day and collect shells Aww. and it was the most incredible Aww. thing and and I can't do that now because I don't I don't live anywhere near the sea I don't know if there's a beach in right? Newton oh god <laughs> um we should fundraise for like a Lido in Luton, that would be amazing. What does Lido mean? Oh, um, sorry, we're not from the beach, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> Very, no, you know, like bracelet Lido, guys. No, do you keep saying these? Words? Okay, <laughs> bracelet is a place, is um, that in it's basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's a man-made beach. There we go. Could have said that, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so you mean like sand, and sand, and, and, and yeah, We've yeah. Put the Woodham Park Lake. Yeah, um, you know, clean that up. <laughs> put some sand. I'm gonna get, get flogged for this. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So guys, yeah, as I, I was saying, <laughs> time and place really influences your hobbies. And when I was, you know, in uni, that was my thing. But I can't do mm. that anymore. But which, is it still technically? Oh up? yeah. If I could, is I that would. Is like a passion as well, then? Just yeah. something you love doing, mm. right? Do, do you have one? Yeah, I'd say I have a few hobbies, but I think personally they've changed over time. I guess, like, it's not like I don't, I'm not interested anymore. I think, maybe, I don't know, maybe I got bored of it. Like, I used to really enjoy baking and I just don't mm. do so, so much anymore. So what took anymore. the fun out of baking for you? Was it that you didn't have time or...? I or actually it don't know. Mundane? I think maybe I just needed something new. Now I like painting. Like, I'm, I'm not great at it, but I think... Um, it's just fun. Mm. That's also another thing I wanted to ask. I think um, I've seen like, I've, 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 I have kind of felt this pressure on myself, which I don't know where it came from, to be honest, but um, I used to, th I used to feel like if I had a hobby, I had to be really great Good at it. But do you th okay. where do you think that comes from? Like, do you, have you felt that before as well? Like, if you had an interest, did you ever feel yeah. like it had to be, it had to mean something? Like, does a hobby have yeah. to ever mean something? I feel like... I see where you're coming from. But you're Sorry, like, go on, Sonia. No, no, you go, you go. Sorry. I feel like social media really doesn't help at all. And, um, like, if you're a baker, there are so many incredible accounts that, do these bakes which mm. blow your mind <laughs> and, if, and like really pretty and, you yeah. can't help, and you're but like yeah. trying to replicate that you might just you know end up something that looks like a train crash but <laughs> I've, I've experienced what you're saying so I'll make something trying to copy whatever they've made and it just looks drastically different oh. it puts you off a little bit yeah yeah but you have to do it for the fun like for the fun that's the aim you yeah have to wake up that day and be like i'm doing it for fun not because yeah obviously try to replicate it but don't be disheartened if mm. you can't but i totally understand where you're coming from like say if you really enjoy playing football but you're not good at it you don't feel it doesn't feel right in a way yeah. it's kind of like who am i you know people are gonna judge me i love no, doing no. this thing but i'm not really good at it good I'm at it, get right. for it i'm not playing in a team you know <laughs> it's a bit weird i know where you're coming from but it's, it is got to be because you enjoy doing it yeah mm. i think i think maybe we need to take that pressure away from ourselves yeah. i think maybe we live in a society where we feel pressured to 
to always get a result out of something does that make sense like you know is it instagrammable yeah, yeah. exactly like I know what you mean. if i'm painting something do i have to put it on my story yeah. does that take away from the fun yeah um and it's kind of a money driven as well because we're in exactly. such a capitalist society yeah. where it feels like when you produce something you need to get paid for it. Like, yeah. if you're good at it, you will get that reward. It's not necessarily that, though. And maybe you don't always want to get the money out of it. I think that may take the fun out of it. I think we want to we want to get back. We want to get more into that after the break because we will have be having a short break soon. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wanted to mention. I think sometimes we do feel pressure for to make money out of something we're good at. Yeah. I think maybe we might even have people ask us, "Well, what are you getting out of this? Yeah. You're wasting your time." Oh, Are hobbies yeah. wasting time? I don't know. Like you guys, let us know what you think of hobbies. If you lot have any hobbies, um, see you after the break. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast, making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome back to Sisters Speak. We are live and um, just before the break, we started our main topic, which was about starting a hobby. And we were talking about why a hobby is important. Uh, can we turn them into careers? Things like that. Um, before we get started, if you want to join in our conversation, if you want to tell us some of your hobbies, um, anything, uh, you can text us or text or WhatsApp us in on 0779481822. And we are also on Facebook Live, so comment down below. Let us know what you think. Um, so, yeah, just before the break, actually, I was uh, talking about how, and so I think Sonia also mentioned how we, ca- we live in a capitalist society. We, some I guess, we are surrounded by... Um, people monetizing off things and I think even with social media I think I've seen a lot of uh, people turn their hobbies into careers which looks great and honestly it is great to see and it's nice to see people enjoying that but at the same time I feel like it may put pressure on us as just the general population of non-influencers to make money out of our hobbies and is that a healthy thing should we always do that I don't know let us know what you guys think But um, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys here in the studio um, how, I think actually, Sonia, you were mentioning during the break that you have an issue. Oh, guys, okay, I don't know if it's Sorry to put you on the spot. It's okay, it's okay. So what's been happening recently, and I don't know where this is coming from, but everything I enjoy, so every hobby or passion, something I like doing, I'm suddenly like, oh my God, I can have a business from this. Like, I can make money from this. Oh, should I turn it into... So I'll give you an example. <laughs> so the other day I was at home and I made this amazing pasta. Mm. And it's not, yeah, and it's not a pasta that you can get in stores. Like, it's my specific... It's a Sonia recipe. pasta. Right. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. So I'm like, why don't I open up a cafe on Biscuit Road? <laughs> on Biscuit Road specifically? It's a good location. Okay, cool. So trust me, so I've thought about it. <laughs> but I'm just like, it's just one thing that made me think that. That's fine. Then I was at a uh, wedding and I was helping out with the photography. So I was kind of behind the scenes planning. Um, so not as a guest, right? And I was like, oh my God, wedding <laughs> wedding planning. That's a job. That's a career. I could be a wedding planner, right? I can get work experience at this place, right? <laughs> it's like a venue. I'm like, I can do it. So it's like everything I enjoy doing, I'm suddenly like, oh, how can I make money? Oh, could this be my career? And I, the only reason I'm saying this is because in the future, and I'm sure a lot of you feel this way, I re- just want to do something I enjoy. I don't want to be stuck or, you know, it, I wouldn't say stuck. I mean, if you want to work in, you know, a different job that's like, you know, not being active or doing sitting down in an office, which I do right now, it's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. Some people like it. Some people love it. You can progress. That's fine. I don't want to do that. I think because of that, I'm like, what can I do? What do I like? Mm. <laughs> I like so many things and I want to do them all. Also want to learn sign language oh, wow. and be a sign language interpreter on the BBC News on the side. But <laughs> this is what I mean. I just want to do so, so much because every hobby, every passion, I'm thinking, how can I make it a career? Mm. This is a bit of an issue right now because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it's an issue? Like, is that is that a problem? I don't think so. Why not? I feel like if you're good at something and... Um, it can be part of your livelihood, 
then why not? You're being but the key word to take out from smart. what you said is if you're good at something. No one said I'm good at it. I just enjoy it. <laughs> but <laughs> you can always progress towards being excellent at it. That's you know? true. That's true. And if you are doing it, it must mean you know something about mm. it. If you're making, you know, incredible pasta, pasta. which you now owe us, <laughs> you must be good at, like, you must know how to boil pasta to start with, No, right? I know where you're coming from. Yeah, and, like, I think if you're good at something, and I thought this in school as well, like, when I was doing my GCSEs, the things that I enjoyed, so the subjects I liked doing, so, like, English and PE, um, those were the subjects I did good at naturally because you you're so, you love it so much that you do better, right? I think that just tends to happen with everything. Mm. If you genuinely love what you're doing, it shows in the hard work that you put towards that. Right. The, the subjects you don't like, n- come on, let's think. I'll give an example for myself. <laughs> maths, I didn't necessarily, um... there you go, I didn't necessarily <laughs> love maths and I was struggling with it. I ended up getting an amazing grade, alhamdulillah, mashallah. <laughs> got, got an A star, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, That's there. amazing. Yeah, I know, and I didn't actually enjoy it, but I had to work extra hard because I didn't enjoy it. It was hard for me. But, so I think that goes with hobbies too. If you like it, you're most more likely to be good at it, right? Hmm. That, I think you just, like, made me think that. Um, do we, do you think we confuse liking something for, like, trying to turn it into our life? If, does that make sense? Like, try, like, I, I, I really like this. I want this to be my career. I need to do, if I like this, then I have to do everything for it. Is that, do we get confused there? Can't, do we maybe, like, I think I've seen... Um, people like I guess older pe- relatives or older people around me who just have like a just a normal job they don't they're not like extremely passionate about it which I guess is fine but do you think maybe we get confused there and think I want to do something that I love and I like is that a bad thing is that a good thing I think that can't be a bad thing like no. you're, what you're saying there's nothing wrong with that Yeah, I really enjoy this let me go progress <coughs> in it so I can have a job in it that is, in my opinion, that's how it should be. If it was easy for everyone to do what they love and earn money and put food on the table and pay Gosh, the bills, that pay would them be good, such a dream. That, that, yeah, how can you not like that? Mm. Would you not want to do for the rest of your life something you actually enjoy? Yeah. Having said that, a lot of people are okay with not doing it because they're like, oh, yeah, I enjoy uh, cooking, but there's more money in banking, so maybe that's what I'm going to do. Like, if people, I'm not saying I can, but maybe some people if can. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. Prioritize yeah. money above happiness, which exactly. I personally think you should never do. That's my personal opinion, guys. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. Happiness comes first. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you're taking a pragmatic approach, mm. then you are more likely to go with something that's, if you have six kids. Yeah, we're being realistic. Here. Right, it's you, real life, yeah. you know. And you have six kids who are all at the age where they are the most, you know, they need a thing to rely and, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then would you not be better off getting a job that is going to give you the opportunity to cater for them as opposed to, you know? But I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I think this kind of links into your thought of the week, Amina, like regarding being young and embracing yep. this youth right now. This is the time if you really enjoy so, like, something. Chase your dreams. Yeah. If you can, now's the time to do it. And uh, again, really it's a your hobbies. thought of the week. Doing something for yourself. <laughs> so, um, if you do something you enjoy right now for yourself, yeah. that will help you in the future. Hopefully, <laughs> do you want to add on to that? <laughs> no, I, th- I I don't know whether you guys had my thought of the week, but yeah, I was just saying that solid treat. Like, if you can take a moment to be yourself and do so, because you will miss being. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, and having time for yourself. Yeah, and not having to pay a mortgage. Just pull it. Yeah, pull it <laughs> yes, and rent yeah. and insurance and everything else that comes with adulting. If you want to bury your head in sand, do so now. <laughs> <laughs> no, chase your dreams. Like, right? if you want to progress on a passion and a hobby right now, isn't now the time to do it? Mm-hmm. Is that what? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But at the same time, I guess there's people out there who might think that they want to leave their hobbies as a hobby because I, mm-hmm. want, I wanted to uh, I, did I ask already I don't know but um, <laughs> like does it does it take away from the enjoyment to make money out of your hobby like I guess we see on social media people who which is great obviously did I already mention this I don't know if I said this during the break or on air slightly but you can you know reiterate <laughs> yeah, the points <laughs> <laughs> I was saying maybe if you're tuning in right now because I guess I wanted to say it again but like 
there's people out there who have made a career and um, they've made a lot of money out of their hobbies, but does that put pressure on us? Yeah. To Does that ruin our hobbies? I mean, I... I think personally, I don't. I wouldn't want to want to monetize on my hobbies, maybe because they're just like okay, yeah. for winding down. But like, do you think for certain things it ruins it or or not? I well, I guess um, Sonia, you said that you'd love to make a career of your hobby, which is fine, and like yeah. that's cool. It's just going back to that same quote of if you work with something you enjoy. I'm not saying that correctly. I forgot how to <laughs> phrase it. But if you're doing something you enjoy and make it a career, you then you never have to work a day in your life. Yeah. But I, I haven't done that yet. So I can't, I'm not speaking from experience. I yeah. don't know. I could, if it suddenly wake up at 6 a.m. to do this thing you love, Sonia, cooking, for example, wake up at 6 a.m., then it might be like, oh my God, I'm doing this every single day. Right. I suddenly, you know, people are complaining about my, you know, then it becomes, I see where you're coming from how it mm. can take the fun out of yeah, also maybe it. maybe mm. even the pressures from it i guess like i'll, I'll use myself on a, as an example again i like i i've gotten into painting recently and if i was suddenly told to um to sell it to people i'd feel so much pressure to make yeah. it perfect um, we have got a text uh, from Taj. Thank you for sending in your text. He said, Salam, not sure if that always works. My passion is motorsport, but being a father makes you think twice about taking that line because of the yeah. risks yeah. involved. Uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the point of trying to Ties make it. in it, it perfectly. May, right. It depends on where you are in life. It depends what your passions are. Um, it, like, you know, if, if it's not realistic then you keep it as a hobby I but guess. It, it can be realistic but i get where you c- it's about the responsibilities you have yeah I, that kind of links into what we just got as a text is i remember i had a friend and she was slightly older and she had two little kids and we were going to thorpe park mm. and we were like oh we're gonna go on this ride and we're gonna go on this ride and she was oh, like i see where this is going <laughs> genuinely and the thing is they're just rides on in a theme park you know they are quite secure behind stuff has happened but you know they usually 99 percent of the time you go on the ride you have a great time and she was like you know what when i was younger she wasn't old guys <laughs> she was like our age but because she had two younger kids she was like when i was younger i'd do everything she goes now because of my kids that's always going to be in the back of my head before she steps onto a ride and she's going like i don't know 100 feet into the air that's what's going to be in her head Aww. it's not a bad thing it's just, it's it's just i really, I really resonate with that because um my husband, he loves driving fast cars. Okay, yeah. And when he was in uni, he would take huge risks driving, like, you know, road races and stuff like that. And he just doesn't do it anymore okay. because, you know, yeah, he thinks, like, I need to be there for my daughter. So he, he has first. stopped, yeah. thank God. But, you know, <laughs> it's... Um, it's such a scary thing. Yeah. And I feel like if you have dangerous hobbies, you do come to a point where you think to yourself, do I carry on now? And yeah. But, but what so I totally get that, that hobby? Like, how do you make, you know, how do you still have that without having that? If that makes sense. Yeah. He hasn't compensated for it. So I don't know how he's Let coming around. He I will it. do. <laughs> I, I, I um, you know, he's still coming to terms with it all. And, um, I mean, if he sees an open country road, he still does it. <laughs> but he doesn't, you know. He grabs that chance. Yeah. But it's, it's just um, about prioritising your... Yeah, it? yeah. He, yeah. Um, he doesn't go you out can, of his I mean, way to kind of find... Yeah. You can find new hobbies then. That's what it is, isn't it? Like, yeah. you've got to find something else that you really enjoy, that you don't feel guilty about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys about that too. Like, we can have, like, different hobbies. I mean, for me, I... I enjoy some of the most, right? So I like just like going in the garden, going out to yeah. parks and whatever, but you can't do that in the winter. So you kind of have to compensate Which and do sad. something else <laughs> in the sad. winter. <laughs> so I guess we have to always, I was just going to come back to like, what is the actual purpose of having a hobby? And it's, I would say to keep you sane, right? I think you mentioned that to me. Yeah. Huh? I mean, that's such a scary, <laughs> I'm not going insane, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I think if you have a really hell? sort of like a jet set lifestyle where you are working from the moment you wake up till the moment you sleep and you have a very demanding job, hobbies become like I know individuals who rely on hobbies to um, kind of create a work life balance. OK, yeah. Um, and they feel like if they are not able to do those things that they do to unwind, 
you know, they become really stressed and anxious and things yeah. like that. So for some people, hobbies are very much a way of releasing all of that tension That's they build word. up. That's good word. Yeah. Like releasing, unwind, yeah. de-stress, relax, you know, enjoy yourself. All the positive things about hobbies. Right. <laughs> Are can't. there negative things about hobbies? Well, I don't know. So, some, you know people some people might think so. Are there negative... Are hobbies a waste of time? If you are, like... You might have someone come to you and say, you know what, why do you have this camera and you're not paying... You're not getting people to pay to take pictures? Mm, and just have that. What's I feel like, what, yeah. What would you say to that person? Something Please kindly <laughs> mind your own business. <laughs> the thing is, that is, is the case. Not everyone has a hobby. Some people, I know people that don't watch TV, um, and they just don't do anything. They just work and they just, you know, eat and live. And, <laughs> like. and that, but that's o- that's okay. And that's ki- it's not weird. It's that's not, not weird. weird. It's no. not weird. It's like my mum doesn't watch TV. Yeah. She's happy. Of you course. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People and have their own. Yeah. Ways. Not necessarily a hobby though. It could she just be. Yeah. Just every day waking up healthy, you know. There's little things they might be grateful for. They might not think I actually need to do an activity mm. or like walking in the garden or watching TV to de-stress, if that makes sense. They might just practice mindfulness or something, you know. Without thinking of it, though, you know. So yeah. Sometimes we're so, so, these days, I mean, everything is so labelled and like, I'm going to do this today. And that's not a bad thing, you know. Buy a diary, write in it. Great mm. idea. <laughs> <laughs> but like, sometimes you don't think about it and you just, you don't even realise you walk a lot or something. That might be your de-stress. I'm yeah. just walking, guys. I didn't even realise. You know, I used to, um, it was not <clears throat> easy for me. Um, when I used to come home from work, um, you know, taking like two trains and a bus and a bus and then a, a coach and this would break down and this and then I have to walk from the station. You know, I didn't enjoy that. But now I'm like, oh, I kind of oh, miss, I'm using my kind of feet. miss walking <laughs> in the freezing cold and rain. It was it was an experience. <laughs> it is something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, that kind of made me think, like, do you think hobbies are a modern thing? Like, no, I don't think they are. Because uh, like, like Sonia said, like people just walk, they do like go for walks, or maybe they they just did it, right? Or maybe is the word hobby a modern thing? I think description of yeah, what those actions as a hobby is probably a modern concept. Mm. But I'm sure like like having to put having to put a label on it and saying you know this is this is my thing is that like is that modern? I feel like maybe it came from social media or maybe because we have things like tv that keep yeah. us inside a lot that we or have, job to, wait, it we have the to tell ourselves time. that we need that we need to do this i mean if you look back to when and i'm thinking of america um uh, when they started earning money it was a nine to five uh when that started happening that five day right week, yeah that's when it became we have time to spare we have disposable income. Right. What do we spend it on? Mm-hmm. Like it actually has come from somewhere. If you think about yeah, it, yeah, that's what I was But thinking. not to say that it's never existed before. Oh, of course. But I mean, the way that has, people yeah, have always had interest. As right? if on a, you know, we don't know what people were doing on a Saturday evening, <laughs> <laughs> just because they didn't label it as a ho- hobby. Yeah. But in that sense, I totally understand where you're coming mm. from. It was now you've got the weekend. What would you like to do? The cinemas now exist. It was a new thing. This is a place to spend your free time. Do you want to do it's that? In justified your free time? because you are working so hard during the week I feel like job applications have really thrown the idea of hobbies into our minds right like when you apply for a job what are your hobbies (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like okay and you have to make your hobbies as interesting suddenly you don't know anything all of this cooking and wedding planning I don't know any of that suddenly and your hobby has to be something millennial interesting incredible I like brushing my hair exactly (laughs) it has to be like Sonia yeah I like I, enjoy it. <laughs> I like categorizing soil. I don't know. It has to be something interesting. I that, don't like categorizing that's true, soil. Actually. But and also when I mean? you, when you fill those out, you have to. It makes you think. Oh, this has Link to be rele- to relevant to the job. job. This has to um, impress exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Doesn't that take away from it being something that you enjoy? Like you're trying yeah. to make it look flashy so, to your new boss. And it, yeah. it's just something. It's meant to be personal, like for some people. That's true. Like you might you, have done it once. If Sorry. you applied for a cinema <laughs> job and they said, "What's your hobby?" You have to say, "I like watching films." <laughs> I mean, you you can have you to imagine, say that, right? right? But but don't you think is we I have this is deep now, <laughs> but we have the privilege of having hobbies because there are some people that don't have that don't. privilege. Yep, that's so true. What a way to ground the conversation. <laughs> No, no, I that think that's so true. We have, I think might, we're, yeah. It might not be the case, because as I mentioned, anything can be a hobby, right? Like walking can be a hobby. 
but because we have the time and money and energy that's why we can do hobbies so again with you saying make the most of your youth mm. you know maybe there's people that want to do things but they can't right now because of their health so that's again that's our privilege that we have in this room right now to actually do hobbies and things that we enjoy mm. yeah i agree with yeah. you someone who lives in fear of their life is not going to be <coughs> thinking about hobbies yeah. right i guess well they might like bucket list kind of bucket list kind of thing yes potentially yeah but i know what you mean exactly Do you know what i mean like yeah absolutely if you're worrying about different things you're worrying about surviving putting yeah. food on the table again you don't have time for a hobby wow that's so do we do we always have time like do we do you think that we waste our time not doing things we enjoy Wow, we've all gone silent. <laughs> that means yes. <laughs> do you? I mean, um, I try to make time for it. Mm-hmm. I really do my best. Um, being here right now, radio, I absolutely love it. And yeah. I wish oh. I could do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, Samia, do you love it? I love it. It's such I a good I think there's vibe. a reason why we're all here, right? Yeah. It's fun for yeah, us. Yeah, we're here by choice, you know, because we want we're to. We're not be. being forced. <laughs> <laughs> there is no gun to our head. We are here, for, yeah. <laughs> You know. <laughs> no, but there you go. That's an example. This is our hobby. Yeah, this is my passion. This is, good. This is something I would love to do as a career, guys. <laughs> Another thing. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. I'm gonna see you on the TV screen one day. Yeah. Sonia. Radio. It's fine. Oh, but you'll oh, see oh. it on like a Facebook live stream of <laughs> me on the radio. You are. Oh yeah, I am on it right now. <laughs> Dream accomplished, Sonia. Right. Put that on my CV. Yeah. So I guess like <laughs> this kind of shows that your hobbies are like you know doable. Yeah, they're doable. As long as you do, like, you can find find your way into it. And I also wanted to make a point that you don't have to always have um, all, the, like, the perfect resources or yeah. be perfect at doing something for it to be your hobby. I think um, I was talking to my cousin, actually, because I, I, I was telling her that, like, I really enjoy painting now. So, like, we were doing it together. And... Um, she was she's 16 so she's just started sixth form and she was saying that um it's she didn't realize how fun it was because at school it's all about Mm. grades and it's like Uh, you sit next to another person who's like so good at art and their painting looks amazing and you're having fun but then you're thinking well you know she's gonna get an a on that and i'm gonna get a d Mm. so like i guess that kind of takes away from it too yeah and she needed to like fill a criteria didn't she like oh draw this specific thing shade this specific way not do what she just wanted to do exactly and i think that really i think that's something i also had to tackle as well i mean i'm 22 now like i i haven't been in that kind of school system for a long time so I'm just like I'm gonna do what I want I'm gonna like (laughs) paint a pair and it doesn't have to look like a pair Um, (laughs) abstract art guy exactly um but yeah I think maybe keep that in mind you're not gonna get graded you just have to do it for the fun and do it for your own enjoyment um I also wanted to ask do you think that being in a money-centered world ruins things that should just be fun I think or is that is like is that a bad thing? Because do you think we do? Do you think we even live in a money centered world to begin with? I think money is very much a part um, central to <coughs> how society is functioning right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but whether it ruins fun, I think it depends on the individual that you are. If you allow it to, then definitely. But if you protect it, then some people hold their hobbies as sacred. You know nothing they don't allow anything to prevent them from able you know going out there and doing whatever so i think it depends on the person that you are but um like in itself i don't think so Mm. either way i mean you most likely you're going to have to earn money to live for sure either way most likely um so wouldn't you rather do something you enjoy if it takes the fun out of it then that's a shame <laughs> but you won't know unless you try it. i don't know yet i mean yeah. i'm not getting paid for any of my hobbies right now but it would be nice because you know at least i'll look forward to doing the work and you feel more rewarded at the end of it um i'm thinking of my friend who really wanted to be a teacher like that was something she from young she was like i really want to do it that it was it wasn't a hobby as such because she had didn't have it yet but it was more like a passion and for her it was about teaching the kids and seeing them learn seeing that smile on their face seeing that click in their heads oh I understand that now miss 
And that was that rewarding experience and that's what she wanted. And so now she is training to be a teacher at the moment, she's working in a school. And it's, see, that's when, yes, you're getting paid, but in your head, it's really not about the money. It's, I'm doing this amazing thing and oh, I'm getting paid for it too, that's nice, on the side. Yeah. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I think I it's think always nice important to, to, you know, to go after something that will give you fulfillment. Yeah. I think social media has really revolutionized how hobbies can be monetized. Be monetized because honestly like there's the most craziest Instagram accounts out there. Like if you love walking, you <laughs> you know, you can like make it a hike thing and then you get sponsors by outdoor companies. Yeah. Start a walking page. Yeah, honestly, I've seen people who like they they have an account and they just go on hikes and there are there are tons of people following them and they're happy to, you know, receive sponsorships from hiking companies, like, right. you or know, like sports brands, sports and, brands and yep. stuff like that. And all they do is upload a video of them it's not hiking. All they do, but yeah, yeah, I know what no, you mean. No, do you know what I mean? It's like, easier for you. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like social media has really allowed for that to happen. And, you know, and I think it's a wonderful thing. So if, if you like, have a talent, it. utilize it, go mm. out there and do it. I yeah, really I guess, I guess that is a good thing about social media. I like really to, root for those accounts. I really do. Yeah. Cuz they've that some a passion that's exactly. just walking and they've turned it into a business. I mean, that's great. <laughs> and they do it so holistically and wholeheartedly. And they're, they're probably inspiring loads of people. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So any last words, guys? Any do you want to do what you enjoy yeah. <laughs> and make you most of the time and uh, like we've all said energy that you guys have yeah I think yeah basically what you guys have said do what you enjoy and maybe don't put too much pressure on yourself to be great on social media about your passion uh, we're coming to an end of our show Assalamualaikum thank you for listening to our podcast we stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org. You'll find all our daily updates on our social media at inspirefmluton.